Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at the proof of the theorem which tells us about what is the product of projections. Is it again a projection? If not, so under what conditions is it a product? Is it a projection? Right? So let's see at its proof first. For the first part, we wanted to prove that if the product is a projection, then both P1, P2, they commute with each other. So here, let's first assume that both P1 and P2, they commute with each other. So that means P1, P2 would be equal to P2, P1. And here in this case, we wanted to prove that the product that is P1, P2, we are, which we are calling by P, that is a projection, right? This is one thing. And another thing, this projection would project whole of this given Hilbert space onto some other space, which is nothing but the intersection of Y1 and Y2, where what is Y1? Y1 is the space where P1 projects H onto and Y2 is that space where P2 projects H onto, right? So this is what we wanted to prove in this case. Now, in order to prove that this is a projection, we'll prove it by two things firstly by telling that it is a self adjoint operator the pro, uh, the product is a self adjoint operator and another thing that it is item potent if uh, both these things are true then we we are able to call the product as a given projection right so here in this case we can clearly see that uh, the given operator p1 p2 that is p that is self adjoint using the following result why because uh, we know that the product of two bounded self adjoint linear operators on a given hilbert space h that is self adjoint whenever we have the operators commuting with each other so in this case we already know the operators commute with each other hence it is self adjoint now moving further we wanted to prove that it is also idempotent operator the product is also idempotent. So we'll be taking, we, we wanted to prove P square is equal to P in this particular case. So we start with P square. What is P? Your P is P1, P2. So you have P1, P2 multiplied with P1, P2. So you could uh, just uh, exchange the brackets here, right? And then because P2, P1, they commute with each other, you could write this to be P1, P2 like this. So it is P1 square, P2 square. And because P1 and P2 both are projections individually, so P1 square is equal to P1 and P2 square is equal to P2. So you have P1 square as P1, P2 square as P2 here. And what is this? This is again P from the thing from which we have started. So from here, you see that this P square is nothing but equal to this P. Therefore, the product operator that is i also idempotent whenever the whenever the operators p1 and p2 they commute with each other right and moreover we wanted to now see where does this particular operator p would map the given whole of the given hilbert space right so this is what we wanted to check here so for that, what we do, we take some arbitrary element. And in fact, we say that for every element X, which is a member of the given Hilbert space, if we have P X, so what is your P? P is your P1, P2, right? So you could shift up the brackets, right? In this way, and because they commute, so this is P X is also equal to P2, P1, X. Now you already know P1 is the projection operator that maps H onto Y1. And similarly, P2 is that projection operator that maps a given Hilbert space onto Y2. So that means whenever you apply P1 onto some element of H, now P2X here is treated as some element of H, right? So when you apply P1 onto some element of H, it would result, it would definitely be some member of Y1, right? Why? Because this is a projection which is mapping H onto Y1. And similarly, when you apply this P2 onto some member of this H1, this belongs to H, right? So whenever you apply P2 onto uh, some member of H, that would surely be a member of Y2. So from here, because P1, P2, X, this thing is equal to P, X and P2, P1, X, this thing is also equal to this P, X. So therefore, all both of them belongs to Y1 and Y2 px belongs to y1 and px belongs to y2 that means it would um, uh, belong to their intersection being present in both of them 
right and moreover because the given element x that was arbitrary in nature it shows that the projection p that projects whole of the given hilbert space onto their intersection the intersection of y1 and y2 so this proves one way for part a now we wanted to prove that if uh, this is given to be the product is given to be a projection then this p1 and p2 both the individual projections they commute with each other so let's see the converse part here Uh, we assume that this p is a given projection and we wanted to prove the commutativity of p1 and p2 now because p is given to be a projection so therefore it is self adjoint in nature right according to definition and p1 p2 is equal to p2 p1 according to this result that we have just studied that the product of two bounded self adjoint linear operators that is self adjoint whenever they commute with each other now in this case the product is self adjoint so therefore the operators commute with themselves right so one part is done we uh, we wanted to prove that this is the projection so this is achieved through the self adjointness of the product of this operator right so next let's see about the second part here so let's see the statement we wanted to prove that if two closed subspaces one is y one is v of the given hilbert space they are orthogonal this would be there whenever the product of their projections is a zero operator so let's see this thing for part b we assume firstly that the two closed subspaces y and v they are orthogonal to each other right and we wanted to prove that py and pv what is py py is the projection which is defined on y pv is the projection which is defined on v so their product we wanted to show that this is nothing but the zero operator so now because we are given y and v to be orthogonal to each other so it would have no element in common apart from the identity element which is the zero right so the intersection would contain a single element which is the zero element and moreover the product py and pv that would project whole of this hilbert space onto their intersection that we already know right so that means whenever you take some element say x from h you if you take any element x from h that means whenever you apply this product projection onto it right it would result in some member here and what is that some member that some member is only zero so that means whenever you apply this thing on to some element of this h you have this zero here for every element x so what does that mean you have obtained a operator which projects every element x on to zero so that means the operator has to be a zero operator so this proves one way of the result now in order to prove the reverse we assume that uh, the product operator py and pv that is equal to the zero operator and we wanted to prove that the subspaces y and v they are orthogonal to each other so in order to show that the two spaces they are orthogonal to each other we consider the inner product of these two spaces and we prove that this inner product is equal to zero for every arbitrary element y and v of the given subspaces right so we consider small y and small v from these two spaces capital y and capital v and we consider the inner product now because the py and pv both are the projections which act as identity on the given spaces y and v right so we could write y as py y right and we could write the small v as pv of the small v right no issue because they would act as identity that is the result and basic definition for this projection operator right that we have already discussed now because py that is itself a projection if it is a projection it would be a self adjoint projection right if it is self adjoint so that means you could shift this py to this side so you have y as such py pv and v and you know this is a zero operator so when you apply the zero operator onto v that will give you 
a zero here and the inner product of any element the zero is itself a zero thing so that means you obtain the inner product of y and v as equal to zero where y and v are any arbitrary members of the subspaces capital y and capital v so therefore for every y and for every v this thing is true hence the spaces capital y and capital v they are orthogonal to each other so i hope you understood the proof of this theorem well that is it for this video thank you for watching